Hey, I'm Andrew Bacon, and today I wanna to show you how I turned some maple and plywood into these awesome platform beds with hexagon headboards on this next episode of Field Treasure Designs. For this project, I chose five quarter inch thick maple. I thought that would look really clean as platform beds. Here I'm cutting them to length. After I got my lengths cut, I took them to my table saw to rip them down to three and a half inches wide. I figured I was able to get two boards per main board. And that skinny side that's left over is actually going to be used as a part of the bed frame. I'll show you that here in a little bit. Just a few more and done. Now I took those two skinny pieces that were left over and cut them to the right length. It should all make sense here as I lay out the pieces for the general bed frame. I have two long sides that are going to be the sides, then I have one side that will be the footboard side, and then I have the skinnier side that essentially goes towards the headboard side. And here's the basic layout of the bed. I did not want to use pocket holes to join the main bed frame together, and so I decided on doing two through holes that I could then plug with nice walnut accents. So I started by tracing a line to get these circles right in the center of where they need to be. I then made a quick template just to make sure that I had my holes correct. Since I had two beds to build, this made the process a little quicker too. Looks good. I took them over to the drill press just to make sure those holes were nice and straight. I also used the head of the Forzner bit there as my depth gauge. And you can see that I had to brace these boards all along the workbench to keep them nice and flat. Here's a better angle showing you how I kept a uniform depth. There's just enough room for the screw head to go in, and then there's enough room for the plug to go in after. Now I get to put my joining skills to the test. So I spread some wood glue on, and as you can see, there's already screw holes because I had already tried this about 18 times. And so you're finally getting the final shot. I hope you enjoy it. I grabbed my Craig flat clamps or surface clamps or whatever they're called. I grabbed my Craig super awesome clamps to put the pieces together. <laughs> and then I had actually gotten a long drill bit to use for this application. And I put some tape on the end there just so I knew exactly when I should stop. As you can see, there is literally no dust coming out of those holes because I've already done this before. This is purely a simulation for the video. To fasten them together, I used four inch SPAC screws. For the headboard side of the bed, I only needed to do one screw on each side, so I just repeated the process. Perfect. So now I get to turn my attention to something brand new. I'm making my own plugs. I had a scrap piece of walnut and I bought a plug cutter. As you can see here, it attaches to your drill. You drill the holes and then you take it to your table saw to cut them out. Check this out. So first I had to cut the strip down just so that the plugs were closer to the blade. So then I flipped it on its side, moved the fence in closer, and slowly worked it across the blade and those plugs fell right out. Well, at least most of them did. And I didn't lose a finger. Score. The other good thing about these is that they are tapered, which means they're going to plug in really nicely. I just used a mallet and tapped them in. After I'm done banging in those plugs, I just use my super awesome flush cut saw and it makes it nice and smooth. So now for some fun. After I had the full frame assembled, it was time to bust out the router. I used a chamfer bit to get a nice, cool, modern angle that would be underneath the bed. I was a little worried about how those plugs were going to do, but man, it turned out really well. Next, I decided to do a dry fit just to make sure everything was fitting together right. And you can see I've got some helpers there in the background. So on each side, I have two select pine boards that serve as runners that the white wood lays on top of that you can see me laying down as slats. I used one by eights for the slats. And then for the pine board, I used one by fours that will be secured underneath. Right now, I'm just using two by four scraps to get the bed at the simulated height to make sure everything checks out. Now that everything's good, I flip over the bed frame to secure those two pine runners into the bottom. Before I secured the runners underneath the bed frame, I wanted to give them a nice chamfer as well. So I did the outside edge as well as the end or bottom edge. My router table worked perfectly for this. 
Once both sides were routed, I was able to then glue them up and fasten them down. In order to get those screws nice and flush, I did a countersink bit to make sure they were recessed a little bit below the surface. I also grabbed a drill to make sure that I drilled a little pilot hole. I didn't want to split any wood. Then I used SPAC screws to secure the pine runners. Then I did the same thing on the other side. Oh, and by the way, I got a little OCD on both sides to make sure my marks were evenly lined up. Next, I turned my attention to the runners. I wanted to do pocket holes so that I could screw them directly into the maple while they also rest on those pine slats, kind of doubling the reinforcement. Then a quick sanding, of course, just to make sure all those edges are smooth. The mattress is going to lay on these, so you don't want any splinters. Quick side note here, you can see the beauty of the Polk workbench in that my drill is laying right underneath, easily accessible. Now it's time to drill the slats straight into the maple. You can see I'm drilling those pocket hole screws right into the maple, but then also the board rests on those pine runners, hopefully doubling the reinforcement of the bed. I had originally thought I was going to glue these down, but then halfway through I decided to not glue them and just use fasteners. I also cut spacers out of scrap to help the process go nice and quick, as well as keep all the slats even along the way. And boom, done. I wanted to do a quick test to see if they were pretty secure and firm, and man, I gotta say, they are pretty solid. A quick thing to note is that I did not do a pocket hole in this inside corner because the mattress kind of curves and you don't want to show that on the bed. With the platform beds done, it's time to turn my attention to the legs. Here I'm cutting a two inch thick maple stock down to eight inches in length. Since I had a bunch of these to cut, I used a stop block to make my cuts nice and equal. Then I needed to rip them down on my table saw to make them equal square blocks. I wanted my bed legs to have a little taper on each side. Thankfully, I had already made a jig for this based upon a tutorial I found in a woodworking magazine. It works pretty well in this application. And there it is, the first one was a success. Here's a better camera angle to show you how this jig works. At some point, I think I'm gonna build a little bit better one. Check out that spray action. So I wanted both sides of my legs to be tapered. So I took the cutoff on the one side, put it on the other one, and sent it back through on another pass. It's not a perfectly precise angle, but it looks really good when finished. And boom, here are all the legs finished. I'm using leg assembly hardware for each leg, and so I needed to drill a hole into the center to be able to insert the threaded insert. So here I'm finding the center of each leg. Then I took it over to my drill press, and thankfully I had just enough clearance in order to get the leg underneath the drill press. It was a little bit wobbly at first, and then I had a great idea. I took the extra maple stock that I had, and I clamped the leg to it so that it would stay straight. Perfect, now I have a nice straight hole. So the next step was to make my holes bigger so that they would fit that threaded insert. So I used the same method of clamping to that maple block so that it would be nice and secure when I drilled it in using my drills. I used some tape to mark the depth that I needed to stop at. Once the hole was clear, I was able to grab the insert and drill it in with an Allen wrench. Now I've got a cool setup attached to my drill which works really well, especially since maple is so dense. And here's that bolt that's going to thread into that insert. Here's how the leg hardware works. That top plate attaches to the bottom of the bed and then the legs just simply screw in from underneath. Pretty sweet. They attach really easy by using four Phillips screws. and just twist them on. Yee-ha!
So that's it. The platform beds are done. My wife helped me move them off the workbench so we could see them set up on the floor. And yeah, you know I'm styling in my Burks and socks. I mean, come on, y'all. Comfort is key. Oh, and no project is complete without the Field Treasure brand, right? Next, I turned my attention to doing the hexagon headboards. I started by ripping down one quarter inch plywood. I'm using my circular saw and the Craig rip cut. And this is before I bought my track saw, so you can see there's dust going everywhere. I cut down six 12 inch wide boards. And thankfully, my miter saw station handles boards this long. I still need to do a video on that. Now I have to make a lot of cuts at 14 inches long, so I made a really fancy stop block to help that process go smoothly. Good to go. Now to start making lots and lots of cuts. Okay, now it's time to cut the hexagons. So thanks to DIY Montreal's video, I was able to make my own hexagon cutting jig. And man, this thing is awesome. Now the jig in her video was a little smaller, but since I'm doing giant hexagon tiles, I needed it to be bigger. And my table saw is more of a contractor table saw, so I had to kind of build an infeed table for it to rest on. So now I'm ready to start cutting. The first cut, as you can see, you have the full board there straight. Then you take it off and you rotate it, and you're able to put that stop block under the clamp to then work your way around the board. And that's how the process goes. Man, it is an awesome setup. You just go back and forth. Now, obviously having a big firm table saw like a saw stop or a power matic would be great. But as you can see, the process does work okay on a contractor sized table saw like my own. And there is my first completed hexagon tile. Pretty sweet. Now, after I did one complete hexagon tile and made sure it was good, I was able to stack them up and triple up on them. I'll let this roll on just so you can get a good idea of how this process works. Then I'll speed it up later. And done. Now I've been able to triple my time, which is awesome. If you can see that stack behind me, there's quite a bit to cut. Don't worry, I'll spare you the rest of all the cutting as the stack grows high. So after I cut all the hexagon tiles out, I wanted to make sure and router around all the edges. Just a little chamfer, just to give them a little three-dimensional look. I definitely underestimated how long this would take, but I am so glad that I took the time. Using feather boards and then finally putting a glove on my hand, it really made the process go a lot easier. And yes, the stack groweth again. At about this point, I was second guessing should I really have done these many tiles, but I'm so glad that I did. So my last mass production thing is sanding all of them down, making sure they're nice and smooth. Obviously this is a headboard, so I want all the edges to be nice and smooth as well as the top. Okay, you get the idea. So the next step was to cut out two rectangles for the backing of the headboard for the hexagon tiles to stick onto. Here I'm cutting one quarter inch plywood with my circular saw and a straight edge. And here I'm just cutting the second one because I'm making two headboards. 
So this gives you an idea of my design here. I essentially just wanted the hexagon headboard to hang on the wall. So I'm gonna drill screws through that plywood onto the studs behind the beds. And then the hexagon tiles are going to go on top of that. Now, instead of gluing them or nail gunning them down, I'm actually going to be doing Velcro so that the tiles can be taken on and off as well as rearranged at any time. Here I'm laying out the tiles for the best possible fit. I also cut two of the tiles in half so that they could fit on the bottom there. So to make sure my Velcro was lining up on both the plywood and the hexagon tiles, I made this simple little jig with the length of the Velcro and I'm using the thickness of the board there to mark my line. I'm gonna be doing this all the way around on every tile. And here comes the Velcro and this is exactly what we're gonna do. The hard part sticks there and then the soft part's going to go on the tile. Now get out of here, I don't need you yet. So I went around one at a time marking all of my Velcro lines on every tile as well as behind it on the plywood. Here's a good look at how the Velcro goes. So that harder part sticks on the plywood and then the softer part's gonna go on every single tile. I'm doing one on each side. And boom, there you go, pretty cool. So all that's left is my wife and I worker being it all the way around, getting all of them marked and then attaching all of the Velcro. And it only took us about 10 seconds. So after we got one headboard done, we couldn't wait to lift it up and see if our idea actually worked. Sure enough, it's perfect. It's not too heavy. The tiles are totally rearrangeable. This is going to be great. Of course, I then had to take a picture for Instagram. So my wife was awesome enough to hold it up. Then back to work on the other one to finish it up. Sweet, this is exciting. So we moved the headboards into place and as you can see there, they are resting on the platform beds. So I took a few hexagon tiles off of where the studs are gonna be in the walls, which makes it super easy to drive screws through that plywood into the studs. Then all you have to do is cover it up with the hexagon. I'm using two and a half inch screws to drive them into the studs. And by the way, that little tool on the wall there is called the stud buddy. It is actually a magnet that's catching on the drywall screw. Pretty handy for locating studs. And then I just pop in the bottom screw. So then I located the stud on the other side of the headboard and as you can see, I just pop a tile off and I can screw in to the stud, perfect. And done. Now the headboard is secure to the wall with four two and a half inch screws and then the hexagons can go right over the top of them. In case you're wondering, that blue tape is actually there to mark which tiles we wanna pull off and paint or stain different colors, which will actually happen next. So we decided on three different colors to mix in with some of the natural tiles on the headboard. When I was at the store shopping for stain colors, I noticed that Minwax had a plain base stain that you could tint to certain color selections. I had no idea this was possible and it's super cool. It's a water-based stain and we went with wood rose and driftwood for like a pink, purple, and a green. I selected walnut for more of the darker color and I went with the gel stain to try it out as I had never used that before either. After they were all stained and dried, it was time to put them together. And of course I had the help of my awesome little helper putting them on. Right here. Oh. Here. Thank you. D. Ooh. Here. Here. Oh, hang on. <laughs> you are you are moving. <laughs> Seven. Here. Whoa, you're so fast. <laughs> So yeah, I had labeled them with letters for one bed and then numbers for the other bed so that I could know which was which when I went to put them back together. Oh, and we... Oh, yeah. Okay, somewhere. this is so it's pretty, awesome. It's pretty epic. Pretty epic. I'll just wait. Yeah. You're filming it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just a second. I already have oh, yeah. one. Dang. Oh, my gosh. You're the best. Here you go. Mr. Oh, Mr. Thank you. <laughs> uh, to stick that. Oh, that's there. funny. No, no jumping on it. <laughs> 
After we put all the tiles on, my wife made the beds and there they are, the modern platform beds for my girls with hexagon headboards that you can rearrange in any pattern or shape that you want. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope it inspired you to build your own and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for all my future videos. Thanks and we'll see you later.